You don't even see anything. I know the signal must be really, really weak, but I wanted to come down here just for fun. I've got my own things to do in my garden. Look at this. Gary is building a tunnel and he's gonna cover it with plants. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be like a, um, it's gonna be like a tent. So if I get mad at him, he can come and live down here, out in the wilderness. No, we have one person watching. We have two people watching. And so anyways, so this is his, what did you call this, a high tunnel? It's not quite, not really a high tunnel, it's a arbor. It's an arbor. I hope you can see this because I have a very weak signal. What I did was, I stuck the modem out, out the window up there, and it's just barely picking up the signal. So I don't want to move too far, but he's been working out here. I've been doing some stuff in my garden, my stuff, simple stuff. And then he has just been building and building away. So you saw his squash that he's growing and he wants to continue. I don't know what he's going to do. I'm telling you what he's going to do. I, I never know what he's going to do. You know what? You tell me. What are you going to do? Well, I'm making this 40 feet long. 40 feet long. Yep. And I'm going to grow grapes. I'm going to grow squash, different vining fruits, and some flowers. And We're going to grow flowers on here, yeah. too. I don't want to move too far because I think I've got a little bit of a signal. I just don't know how good. Nobody's telling me if my signal's good. If you can tell me, tell me if the signal's good. If not, I could just cut this and just do a, a real video real quick on it and then show you what he's doing. But this is rebar. Hi, Marie. Is the signal any good? Because I can't tell. Yeah, I got five thumbs up. That could be just being nice. <laughs> I don't know if the signal's any good. Anyways, look at Gary's garden back there. If I walk in there, I'm afraid. It's good? Oh, good. Thank, thank you, Tammy. Hello, Stephanie. You grow row signal is good. I can't believe, I'm afraid to move because I took the modem and I put it out the window up there. Don't even open that window usually. And I'm getting somewhat, you know, of a signal, but I wasn't sure how much. So I thought I'd come down here for fun. Hi, Debbie, Terry. Oh, good. I, it is more growing area. Hi, Brenda. It is more of a growing area, but I think he wants to do a lot of trellising. And I have no idea what he's doing. You know what? Gary, say something. You don't have to walk over here. I put a mic on him. Okay. Can you hear Gary? Talk. Well, well, this will act for, this will be for a couple of things. Hi, it'll, Diane. It'll to, I'll grow things on it and it'll act as a fence or a boundary for the deer. So the deer won't be able to get to my apples. So instead of putting up a fence, I'm putting this trellis up and the deer will be on this side. They won't be able to get to the other side and I'll just grow things on it. Perfect. Brenda, Tammy, I'm afraid to touch the phone last time I knocked somebody off. Um, they all said they could hear you. Stephanie said, oh, she can hear you. So you know what you could do? Diane can hear you. Willie Van Week can hear you. From Africa, they can hear you. Oh, wow, that's going far. <laughs> wow, so the signal is going all the way to Africa. Terry Hall can hear you. So you know what, Gary? He's you're loud and clear, Gary. Okay, so that's I could good. just stand here. I should have brought a chair. And you could just talk and tell your thoughts. Look, he's going to videotape it. I don't know if we'll ever see it, but we probably will. He says he's putting it together. So tell us what you're going to do, and I don't have to say anything. Well, Montreal, I've already Hello. started last year with the squash, and they did really well. So I'm going to interspace what I plant here with things like manza, manza, you say it, manza, manzazia. Manazia. I don't know what you're, you're talking about. The tomatoes? No, it's a flower that's got a tube, you're like asking, a trumpet type. Um, you are asking the wrong person to try okay. to plant something. I'm going to set it up so it'll be vegetable flower, vegetable flower, something like that, and the hummingbirds will be able to fly through it and feed on the flowers on the inside or outside. They'll look 
Beautiful. So, now, will there be any, like, you think any squash will hang from the top as it's growing? Yeah, like the squash did down there. The, those, the squash that are hanging down there are four pounds. So... Jamie Country Living, hello. Well, I don't want to move too far because I want to get a clear shot to there to here. And then I'll keep the signal. Otherwise, there's no sick. We don't even have a cell site up here. Mandeville, Mandevilla, Stephanie's trying to help us out. The, yes, that's what he's talking about, the vine. Mandevilla? Yeah. Mandevilla. Yeah, I, I'm really good at butchering names. Doesn't matter if it's a person's name, a flower, but I'm really good at that. So that's what's going on. Look at that, it's cloudy today. You're watching ads, they're putting ads on this? So I just thought I'd come down. I was working on the deck a little bit. Wonderful, Brenda, wonderful. I'm working on, I was working in the garden up there and I've got, I've got a lot of buckets that pull out of the kitchen. Kitchen scraps and I leave them out and then they got rained on and they stink. Plants are gonna love it. And I'm gonna dump it in some totes. He wants to grow everything from buckets. These won't be in buckets, will they? They'll be in totes? Some, some will be in totes, some will be directly in the ground. I've got a couple of grape vines that I wanna put along here and it'll be kind of similar to the way I grow inside my garden. Everything's going to go together. So it'll just be a mishmash and I've been successful in there. I should be pretty successful out here. So things that might need a little bit more care, I'll put in totes and other things I'll put directly in the ground. Oh, that's right. This is, how many inches of wood chips is are there here? This is a mountain of wood chips, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, right now it's down to about eight or nine inches deep. So these are the holes. I, to put the posts in, I cleared the wood chips away to get to the mineral soil so I could put the uh, stakes in, the T-posts. So along here I've got more soil than I do down further on. So I don't know if you can see this, but here I've got T-posts. From here... Nikki, me too. From here down, I had to make these concrete blocks because the bedrock is just under the surface here. So I've got more soil down this end. I could use the T-post down this end. I had to make these blocks to support the rebar. Okay. Tell them not me. So the rebar acts as a rib to hold the remesh. So I'm using remesh. I know some people use cattle panels, but we don't live anywhere close where you can get cattle panels. So that would be a road trip and I wouldn't be able to get a lot of them home. But the remesh, I prefer the remesh and the rebar. It's very, the rebar gives it structural strength and the remesh, this will last a really long time. So this is, this I like. I got some new remesh and after a while it'll go from this color and it'll rust and from a distance you'll see see the plants but you don't really see the remesh the remesh kind of blends into the surroundings so i kind of like that look now cattle panels they're yeah. expensive though aren't they they're expensive yeah and a piece of this what'd you call this this is this is re remesh and that's how much do you know? It's around two hundred dollars for a hundred and fifty foot roll right now. And how wide is a hundred and fifty foot roll? It's five foot wide. Okay. So this foot. section is five feet. And the panels are expensive, though. Yeah, the panels. I don't. The price is still fluctuating, so I don't know. I couldn't quote you how much a cattle panel's worth now, but it could be thirty dollars. And I don't think you'd get a length. This would be sixteen feet. The dome I'm using here is sixteen feet. So other people might have an idea of what the price of cattle panels are right now. I'm, I can't get them, so I don't know the price of them. See, I'm gonna to try to scroll through on some of your questions because, and if I knock you off, I'm sorry. I've done this before. I touched somebody and I knocked them off. Uh, I, Jamie, I'm with you. I can't wait to see it either. You grow a roll. I see, it's gonna be nice. Oh, I look forward to seeing it too. Stephanie, do you eat everything you produce? 
We can't possibly eat everything. I've given some to neighbors and friends, but you know what? You want to produce more than you're going to eat because that's how you're making the soil. Otherwise, bags of soil, oh my gosh, are so expensive. The cheapest thing you can get at the store, at the hardware, at the hardware, at the nurseries right now is just the plain cow manure. I think I showed that in one of my videos. It's like $2 a bag, but I don't want to, I don't want to get steer manure for that. Plus you don't know what's in that. I mean, it's coming off of farms. I don't know what they're doing. That's the cheapest. I don't, I don't want that. So you get a regular bag of potting soil and you could be looking at $20 depending on the size of the bag. Willie Van Wink, he's, uh, is growing figs, oats, and rice in containers. Really cool. So he'll be growing in, I guess, buckets, but also in the ground and in totes. Denver needs more fence posts. But you're, these aren't, here, these aren't fence posts. What he's actually using is rebar and he's bending it. You're gonna do a video on, or did you? No, I'm filming it. As we speak? As we speak, yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, but I've, I've probably, I'll shut my cameras off. I've, Wait a minute, the I camera I am standing this, in front of right now. Well, this is for clips. Okay, well, if you would have told me I wouldn't stand in front so, of the camera. I didn't know your camera. No, leave it on, leave it. No, I'm, I've got what I wanted to get a clip of. No, oh, don't shut it off. Now that one will stay on until your stick runs out. And this one will shut off when you least expect it. It could, it could go 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes they go as far as 30 minutes. So sometimes I'm out there just chitter chattering away to find out that my wonderful camera went off. Yeah. I don't want to dis. I didn't come down. I'm gonna sit down for a minute. I'm gonna to try to sit on a log. Oh, this log is not comfortable. Um, I didn't come down here to disrupt you or stop your video. So. No, I, I just needed a clip of how I got the remesh over the top there. Wow. And you said this thing is how long now? 40 feet now. So you stopped it, I'm going to say where the end of this blue tote was? Yeah, I just, within the past few days, I doubled it. So, okay, I, so it went from about 20 I to 40. I had it from here. Now I got it down there. Wow. So, so I've just extended it. But the T-Pace, the cost of T-Pace, or fence posts have gone up. Anything still has gone up. Everything's gone up. Okay, so I was saying it was rebar. I see the t uh, you're calling them T-Posts? Yeah, T-Posts. These are fence posts. These are five footers. They were the least expensive and I've got six footers around that I'm going to use for fencing, but this I used to support the, uh, the rebar because the rebar by itself isn't stable, but this makes it nice and stable. You answered the question I was going to ask you. Why can't you just go straight? Um, I'm going to try to scroll down for a minute. If I knock anybody off, I'll apologize in advance. Um, let's see. Lady Trico one. See, you're collecting dry leaves from oak trees. Oh, from a local park. Wonderful. I actually saw neighbors down the street. The whole front of their house is covered in leaves, and I've been thinking about going there. I don't know. I don't know them. I knew the people that lived there before. I don't know them now, and I don't know what they would think if the neighbor goes down there and starts sleeping. It's crazy. Um, Lori wants to know how long you've been doing gardening. I gardened in Australia for... I think you actually means here, though. Here? I think. Okay, so you were gardening in Australia as a kid. I mean, you grew up on a farm. A yeah, dairy, but I wasn't gardening farm. until I... You grew up on a dairy farm, right? Yeah, my early days were on a dairy farm. But I was also on a wheat and sheep farm, too. And so. a sheep farm. That's what I was thinking. I thought, wait a minute, dairy. That's right. And then, he, well, uh, let's say with the wood chips. How long have you been doing the wood chips? Is it five or six years? I, I've lost we're, track. We're, we're with, between five and six years since he started the wood chips. I've pretty much got all the wood chip piles empty. I've got a couple left. I haven't gotten any more in for a while, but I smell wood chips in the air and I looked around our neighbors just across there put some down. 
Brenda, I'm, I, I know. You know, you try to tell, Brenda Hook, I try to tell people about composting in place. Go get them, Robbie. Yeah. Um, I might. And they don't understand. And then I watch videos and it's like, oh, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you can't grow in it. It's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so I just wish they would try it. I mean, think about it. I always talk about it. Leaves fall, plants produce seeds, the seeds fall in the rotting leaves and they grow. They don't wait. Oh, where did you get those? I've, I've been collecting different leaves from all sorts of trees. We don't have a lot of deciduous trees here. We've got a lot of evergreens, but this is a mixture of everything. Avocados, anything I can find, I rake up and I've, I'm setting up another leaf bin for the leaves. I haven't gotten that far yet. You know where Jesse used to live? Yes. Have you seen their front lawn? No, I haven't. I did the other day, I drove by. Oh my gosh, I don't know, I have no idea what kind of trees they are, but the whole front lawn is covered in like five inches of these big leaves all over it. And I thought, wow, and they're all brown. Yeah. I don't know the people. If Jesse was there, that would be different. But uh, it's just covered. But then I have a lot, you know, all he has to do and all I have to do, like I did this morning, is start collecting the um, tree collared and I've got my own leaves. That's why you asked, do we eat all our own produce? I should eat more than I mean, <laughs> but no, but we use it. it. All the produce goes back and creates soil. Thank you, Lori. I don't know. I bet Australia gardening is quite a bit different than California. Depends on where you live. It's not that much different. Oh, from the Philippines Islands. Hello. Um, oh, Pomona. You just got the, you just remind me, I'm going to have to go up soon and feed the hummingbirds. I filled them this morning, but they are really migrating through. No, I understood, Lori. There's a, there's wonderful spell checks and it's amazing what some of this stuff says. I know that when we watch Gardening Australia, I know it's off the air right now for the season of being hot. I think they garden like we garden, where a lot of people don't believe in composting in place. They use a lot of styrofoam. They use a lot of things that people aren't comfortable yet using here. You, the this best thing, to, handy. the best way to describe it is you use whatever raw material, materials that you can get. And produce in Australia is in styrofoam boxes. Produce here is in cardboard boxes. Hello, so. Stephen from Hawaii. Go ahead. It makes it simple. You know, think about it. Mother Nature, nature does not make things difficult. It really doesn't. And you think, if you think about nature, it's not that difficult. I think people make it difficult. And there are certain plants I understand that need more work than others. You know, and you may have to cater to them and do different things, but in general, it isn't that hard. Walk with me, Homestead. Hello from Southeast Texas. Um, Rena from Monroe, Washington. Yes, yeah, simplify. If you make it, let me tell you something. If you make it hard, you won't do it. That's just what it ends up. If you, if you garden and you start putting out a lot of money and time and effort and you're getting back some stuff and you think, well, gee, I can go to the grocery store and get that. Why should I, should I do that? Then you'll give it up. But make it easy where you, it's just growing almost on its own and you'll just keep doing it forever. Hello, Judy from uh, Portland, Oregon, a suburb. Jamie is from Maryland. Now I'll tell you, I'm falling in the same boat right now. I just did a potato harvest, which was the, the funniest thing. I got maybe three pounds of potatoes. Did I get maybe three pounds? And it really is difficult for me to think about if I want to continue. I'm going to make sure I'm not knocking the mic. Because here in California, and I don't know how much, that's what I want to ask you guys. Here in California, Southern California, you can go to a 99 cent store and get five pounds of potatoes, sometimes for a dollar. 
and sometimes it could be as high as two dollars for five to ten pounds how much does it cost where you guys are i grow potatoes in containers i do i do how much does it cost when you go to the grocery store to buy five or ten pounds of potatoes i'm wondering is it just here is it all over the united states it's so cheap now i understand you're screaming oh but your potatoes are better they are they are they are they are if you grow them on your own, you know that they're not doing what sometimes they do. They'll grow potatoes to clean up the land and all that. We're not going to get into all that. So I absolutely understand that. But I can grow something else in a bucket that is worth far more. $3. So Lori says she can get 5 to 10 pounds of potatoes for $3. Debbie said $2.79. That's the issue. I don't want to say who... The Philippine Islands, seven dollars. So it's cheap everywhere. It's cheap to buy, but you don't have. I know it does taste better. It um, walk with me. I know I can't wait for all this. Five to eight dollars for ten pounds from Windy. My grocery pickup. See, in in the Philippines, they've got a better alternative. They've got Ubay. Oh, they have Ubay's. Okay, and Brenda says ten pounds, four dollars. I am not saying not to grow potatoes. Don't come back and say, oh, Robbie said don't grow potatoes. That's not... Pine needles. Oh, yes. Yes, you can compost pine needles. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if you don't have a lot of space, it may not be your first choice. That's what I'm saying. Now, he's got space if he wants to play around with potatoes. But if you don't have a lot of space, then you want to grow something that's going to cost a lot of money. Right now, go get... A pound of greens? Dust on my throat now. 500 pounds. Is your water on? Yes. Can you hold this and walk around? I gotta get some water from the hose. <clears throat> I've been sitting in oh, all these here. leaves. What? There's water in here. If oh, you okay. Don't mind. Yeah, because I've got. That's, that's just water. I didn't make tea today. That's just water out of your dirty cup. It is just water. <clears throat> Usually you have tea and all kinds of stuff in it. This is a funny mug. See this mug? This is a funny mug. I, can, I have a story on that. Anyways, uh, I was talking about potatoes. I, I think I was talking about potatoes. I know, uh, anyways, I completely forgot what I was talking about. But, but the thing is, I'm not saying not to grow it. I'm just saying that greens, like I said, are so expensive. There's so many things that are so expensive. You want to start with that and then work your way to potatoes. I probably will do more potatoes. <clears throat> Boy, do I have dust in my throat. <clears throat> it's dirty over there. <laughs> but um, I'm going to think about how much I'm going to grow. Or I just go for it and grow a whole bunch and keep trying. But I have grown potatoes yeah, I've got pota in pots. I did it in a bucket. And I only put a few in there and I got, you'll see, I'll show it on the garden tour probably what I got out of that. But I got more last time I grew some. But I look at it and I think, gee, I think I'd rather grow carrots in there or uh, I want to grow a lot more broccoli. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to have to think about it. Purple potatoes. That's nice. You just made me think I've got some potatoes that I haven't harvested. I think they're sweet potatoes though. Do you have potatoes in there? Yeah, I've got potatoes in buckets. There's Gary's potatoes. Grow them that way. Oh, I'm gonna put here, can I hand you this? I don't know if I can get this through. I've got it potatoes in totes. Okay, so you got potatoes here. Yeah, I've got potatoes. I think I see leeks too. Uh, elephant garlic. Oh, elephant garlic, okay. And regular garlic. And where's the potatoes? The potatoes are just starting to okay. come up here. So, we can pretty much grow potatoes year round. When they start to grow, that's when I plant them. The problem is I get five pounds of potatoes, peel them or scrub them and make potato salad. Yep. In one day. <coughs> Jeez. <clears throat> but that's the thing. Um, I gr it's such a small amount. I've got to figure out how to get more potatoes. I watched a video of somebody that grew potatoes. He put out a whole bunch of buckets and he I calculated the amount of money the, all these three bags of, of um, potting soil and different soils and all this other stuff he put in it. 
he probably had about $60, $70 worth of stuff he put in it. And at the end, he had five pounds of potatoes, a pound per bucket. So it didn't work out that time. That's not to say it didn't work out other times. There's got to be different ways. Now, we don't put money out to grow potatoes. You've got just wood chips in that one? Yeah, combination of wood chips and our native clay soil. Okay, so he's got native soil and wood chips. So it's not a big loss at all. The only loss, if there's any loss, is just the water you got to water it, which is no big deal. But when you got to start buying potting soil and all that, it's so expensive. I am not putting anybody down about growing potatoes. I want to grow more potatoes. I just want to make sure that it's more efficient. Two, Carol, a total of two. And we don't use it all. It continues on through there. There's a lot of avocado trees over there, and then there's citrus trees. Oh, you've got to do something on citrus trees. See, there's citrus trees up there. And then this is the side we do our gardening on. A lot of the avocado trees over the years are starting to die back. Wow, 235 pounds in a 200 square foot. Close to 600 pounds. Wow, that's good. Yes, I own, we own the property. We do own our own property. Could, I'm gonna just be honest, could I buy the same property today? No, I would never have been able to afford it. I've been here since the 80s, and I will tell you it was a, it's kind of a chain reaction. It all starts with buying one little house and then going to a second house, so you keep putting it into other property. This is probably pretty much would be the end. I don't think I would go anywhere else. I like the weather. I don't plan on going anywhere. You know, circumstances always change for people. The only thing is, I'm, I'll have to tell you, pro taxes are just outrageous. Property taxes. Let's see. Let's see, if the time is right, you can get three rounds of potatoes. Okay, that's walk with me. I do want to grow a lot more potatoes. I grew last year some, and I was very happy with them, but like I said, that's the only issue. I, I want to, <laughs> I can go through five pounds of potatoes in one day making potato salad. I think some of you thought, okay, I want you to understand, I'm not, I am not putting anybody down growing potatoes. I want to grow potatoes, but I want to grow more than what I'm growing. So I have to get that right, and I don't want to put any money out. So if there's a loss like there was, and that was really good, the potatoes I picked the other day, really, really good. I have, I can turn around this way. Look at that. You can see him too. Where did he go? So, I mean, I was, I don't even know where he is. I know he's behind me. Where are you? Oh, he's on the ground there, that's why. Um, it's just that it was one meal. So it was growing for three months. My potatoes were that big. And I didn't have to peel them, just wash them, put them in a pot, a little water, a little butter. Hello from the UK. Simpli simplify, simply, simplify, something, okay, gr gardening, it disappeared already. It was good, but it was one, it, it was like one side meal and that was it. So there he is. Now I'll turn around. I'll try to turn this around, okay. I'm not putting potatoes down. I love potatoes. And I understand that it's very hard to get organic potatoes. And they're very expensive organic potatoes from the store. So that's it. No, I want to grow more potatoes. I do. I just want to make sure that when I plant them, there's nothing else at the time I want to plant. That's exactly what I'm talking about, Judy. It is fun to grow, and they're wonderful, and they're delicious, but the thing is, you have, yes, I have the space, but again, then I've got to go through and water them and take care of them. I grew my, let's put it this way, I grew my potatoes in a bucket on top of a tote, kind of like what he's got sitting here, and it worked really, really good. But when I tipped it the other day, there was just a few little potatoes, and yet the tote still grew. So all in all, it was okay because I composted in there. I had the potatoes growing on the top and the bottom I had squash growing, so it worked out. But maybe there's something else I want to do. I don't know. I'm not sure. And that's the fun part. We all can grow what we want to grow. All 
Oh, Carol, you finally got zucchini to grow. Not, not much fruit. You know, keep trying and make sure you put a lot of compost in there because I'll tell you, zucchini seeds and the, the squash seeds will grow in rotting matter. You go to compost your kitchen scraps, all of a sudden you've got squash growing everywhere on seeds you did not know were even good. And the other thing is, I tried to be smart last year and compost all the zucchini I did not want to grow because I didn't want hybrids. I wasn't sure if they hybridized. I put them on the bottom of my totes. I think I've got some clips of it. I could not believe that the zucchini seeds from the bottom grew six to eight inches up and still made it to the top. So this deal is only do it one and a half heights of your seed. Baloney. <laughs> when the seeds want to grow, they grew eight inches up. They came all the way up. Okay, so a cardboard box will last long enough for taters. Well, if that works for you, I mean, that's great. I've tried it, but you know, you do, everybody's got to do what works for them. A hundred and thirty-one pounds of zucchini. Wow, and they were very hungry. 31. Am I reading that right? I guess I am. Oh, you grew it for a show. Oh, wow. Let's see. There are a lot of work. Continue working. Adding more soil. Yeah, and potatoes are different. Some you build and some you don't. Correct, Gary? There's something about when you add in the soil to grow yeah, more potatoes? There, yeah, there's... Um, like, like the, they use the same term as tomatoes. There's a lot of some that'll set, set their tubers above the original one you plant. And that those you have to build the soil or plant them deep. And there's others that'll just spread out sideways. Oh. So you've got determinant or indeterminate is the term they use. It's not really the same as tomatoes, but that's the term that they use here. Okay, so now that makes sense. If I planted the wrong potatoes in the bucket and they spread out, that could be why they didn't grow so big because they were too compacted. Indeterminate potatoes, you mound them. Okay, so the indeterminate, walk with me, Homestead is saying that you mound those. See, I don't know, but mine were small. It tasted great, but they were small. And I, I'm gonna tell you, I don't even know what they were. Um, I can't remember if they came from Sam's Club or not, some of these potatoes. The ones I tried to grow are determinate because I started growing them under the wood chips and I don't have to mound, mound them. They'll just grow sideways. So they're the ones that I'm continuing to grow is the determinate ones. Okay. Oh, the way would be they say to buy potato seeds that you have to buy from somebody. I haven't done that yet. I've always done well buying potatoes from the store. And what I like to do is you go to a store, you find the most expensive ones that are not the common ones. And I tend to get sort of the more expensive varieties. But if you do buy seed potatoes, you get a better choice of what you can grow because a lot of the ones that they sell for seed, they're very hard to find they don't really grow them commercially, so you really don't find them at grocery stores. They're yeah. good. You know, they are really good varieties. Well, you were happy with the potatoes I cooked up the other day, weren't you? They were yeah. so good. Well, I don't know how far I can walk because I don't have a signal. Next time I bring them out, I'm all the way out. Um, do I grow potatoes? They weren't organic, the ones we bought. I don't know if they were. Some were, some weren't. Oh, we did, some of them were that I yeah, bought? Yeah, okay. it was a variety. We do grow sweet potatoes. And we do have purple ones. Uh, so we do have sweet potatoes. That's something I'm gonna have to dig up. And I've got sweet potatoes growing out front. They're all, all over and I haven't even picked them yet. I should. They can be sprayed with an inhibitor. So can ginger, turmeric, and all that. I do know that. They grew really nice. And an inhibitor, normally they won't grow, but it could be the conditions they were grown into. 
Well, you you grow row 20 degrees. Yeah, I'm gonna have to admit the weather's been nice. It's it is cloudy as you can see, but we're not cold. I'm wearing long sleeves, <laughs> but I'm really not. I'm not cold. It has cooled down at night a bit. Uh, we can get upper 40s, mid 50s. That's better than it has been. I got them still building the house. You can see the house from here. It's a single story house. I don't know how they do that. It's three floors. Let me tell you something. It's three floors. They told me they don't count the back end. I haven't figured that one out, but okay. They're still building. Everybody's got their own ways. Is that minus one degrees? Wow, simply, am I saying that right? Sim simple, please, simply, simply gardening, one below. Oh my God. I couldn't do that. My sweet potatoes are in totes and Gary's are running all over the garden in the ground. You don't have any sweet potatoes in totes or do you? I've got sim some. Leaf. Sim, sim L-I-F-Y. Say it, Gary. L I F. Sim yeah, I'm really Simplify? Bad. Simplify? Simplify garden. I don't know if that's simple. She said to simplify. All right. I've got some in totes, but I prefer to put them straight in the ground. One degree centigrade. Yeah, I, I don't know what that is, but Gary said. Celsius. Celsius. Sorry about that. That's... Uh, is about 35, 40, 35 or something? 35, okay. I'm trying to translate. It's been a while since I've used Celsius or... Look at the orange tree. That orange tree, did you see that? It's so full of oranges. That's just one, that's one thing our trees are doing really good. That tree I bought in 1989. There were, there's three of them. Three trees, and they sat there for all these years and just stayed small. We put wood chips all over the bottom, and they took off, and now we have so many oranges growing everywhere. <gasps> Broccoli! Oh, that's wonderful. Walk with me. I've got to get a lot more. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was so funny. I was working with... I was working on something in the house, and Kitty was following me around and going nuts. The funniest thing, I was... I was actually working on a project. She was looking for the camera. I, I couldn't even, I didn't even know at first what she was like. She was walking around me. She was looking at me. Yeah, she thought I had a camera out. I wasn't doing a video or anything. I was just working on something. She was looking all over for a camera thinking, oh, she's going to do that. And then I'm going to get more broccoli. I'll have to try that, Judy. I'm going to try different things and see. OK, it is 30 degrees. Oh, you can't see my window. No, you can't see a window from here. It's just something really funny. It's almost stupid, but it's funny. I got tired of looking at the window. Let me see if I can zoom in. That's where the hummingbirds be. Oh, that's pretty much done. I don't like drapes. You can't really yeah. see it from here, but it's a flag. Can you see that? It's two flags. I had these old flags, and I thought, wow, I'll cover these plastic. They're, they're hard plastic. It's like... What am I trying to say? It's like plywood, but they're plastic. And I covered them with a flag, and one of them, you can't see it from here. Maybe I'll show it on a different toy. That one, it's a girl, you cannot see it. She was golfing. I don't know how I ended up with a flag. I don't golf. So I had another flag with flowers on it, stapled it together, and now it looks like the girl is gardening. Okay, so. She does love the camera. She absolutely loves the camera. Walk with me, yes. Did you have to root them in water first? And oh, no, I didn't root the potatoes. I didn't do anything with mine. Mine's just started to grow a little bit and I just dropped them in there. I have to find the original video, which I lost when I planted them. It's somewhere on my computer because I'm not sure what I put in the bucket. All I know is there were potatoes, they taste good and we ate them all because I wasn't gonna grow any more of those right now. Wow, that's warm, okay. We're actually warm. They said we have been real warm. Katie, hello. That would work with potatoes. But the problem is, 
If I can go through five pounds of potatoes in one sitting, Angie from Charleston, South Carolina, it's like I would need a bucket of potatoes, two, two buckets a week at least, when I start eating potatoes. So I'll figure it out. Like I said, I do grow potatoes, he grows potatoes, but it just seems like it's never enough. U L I R I C A. Yulika. <laughs> Hello. Oops. From Sweden. And you have winter now. We have winter. Yes, you. Katie's telling you where to get the totes cheap, and that is true. A lot of my totes. Bef okay, during the lockdown we had here, I, I didn't go out for over a year. So I was buying totes like these from Walmart and they periodically would throw them on sale. Believe it or not, they were putting them on sale if you bought a lot of them for like four and five dollars. That's why we have so many the same. But you are right, at the thrift store, you can get them for um, one and two dollars. Because lately I have picked up a couple here and there when I've stopped at the thrift store. So check the thrift store, and if you don't see any, ask if they have any totes, and don't worry about lids. If you go into the store, how do you, how do you, T-O-N-I-A, Tona? Alexander, she's a, she's a member. Tona? Dogs are the smart, Tona. They are the, they are the smart, especially her. She's really smart. So anyways, I have been starting to pick them up. Is it Tanya? T O N Y A. Tanya? Tanya. Yeah. Tanya, okay. Um, yeah, I have started to pick up some more totes again from the thrift store. I, they even have, had a whole bunch of clothes and stuff in one. I asked them if they wanted to sell it, and they said, okay. That worked out really good. Yes, Tanya, okay. Yes, that is this dragon fruit. They, from the Philippine Islands, Adventure Milo USA sees your dragon fruit. He's going to have a lot of dragon fruit this year. They're well established yeah, now. Yeah, they're well established. This this will be my head. The, oh. the, trick, the trick will be hand pollinating them. Oh. Some of them are going up to the top of the um, Oh, they have. Structure. Let me see if I can step back without tripping. <laughs> oh, look at that. They're going up. To the top. Kathy says, cool. I mean, isn't that cool? I didn't even see that. Cool, Ken. Northern California. Okay. Expand it to over double its size. Is that cool? I don't think that C S. I don't think that would work here. And do not kid yourself that I have not thought about that. But it's kind of. I don't know if I can't explain it. And let's just say it wouldn't work in our area to to give part of your land for people to farm on. Friends, family, yes, but they'll look at it like. They don't want just people coming up here. I don't know, we'll see what happens. The thing is, we actually are using this. Gary's got his whole section here, and then I've got my gardens up there. This part is trees, so we kind of leave that right now. There's a lot of avocado trees. It's $10 and up in Ontario. <clears throat> Must be, we're soft talking potatoes. And so I want to leave the trees I have tried to garden in the other part, but it's hilly. It's more hilly. This is like we have flat areas and hill areas. So you really want as flat as possible, unless you're going to terrace everything. So this has worked out really, really well. N yeah, but you know what? Simplify gardening. It, it depends on the people. It really does. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Right now, you know, we're working the land. I mean, you couldn't grow anything. If you looked at this place six, eight years ago, this was just, well, there's no clay to show. You couldn't grow anything. It looked like cement. It was horrible. So he did change it. And you don't know who you're letting in. And that's true. 
Then you've Brenda, got... um, it depends on how dead your tree collard looks. If it dried out from the center, something happened, or one inch tree collard. Sometimes you can recut the bottom and try to revive it, and, and it might come back. Some of them do, and some of them don't. And if you bought it, that's true. If they bought it from the store, I'll tell you, is it, we had to return something once. Was it Home Depot took it back? Yeah. Home Depot will take it back on certain things. But a tree collard is a vegetable plant, and I don't know. You'll have to see. Squatters can take over, and that is true. Okay, you were going to say something, Gary? Liability. The liability is a big thing, too. So that is true. you'd have to get liability insurance and oh, uh, yeah, umbrella insurance. You'd have to deal with a different insurance. Then you're going through. That's true. If you allow somebody on your property and something happens, you could get bit by a spider and say, oh, your spider made me sick. So it's, it's tough to do that. Tanya's just got, Tanya's got a... Uh, soldering iron. I'm starting to grow seeds already. Well, what I'm growing, and we'll see what if it grows, it's stevia. Etsy, Etsy's a good place to get. I get seeds on eBay. You told me you were going to get a bunch of seeds on eBay this year, Gary? Yes, I've eBay? got a few seeds. You bought from Etsy. We bought from Etsy. Uh, yep. From Hawaii, right? From Hawaii. And then eBay, I love eBay. I've got, he's called the heirloom garden, uh, heirloom garden? Heirloom, heirloom seeds. And he has great seeds. I am really happy with him. And he's so cheap. So I'm very pleased with him. Yeah, the best thing to do is read the reviews. That's really cool, Wendy. OK. What, what, Gary? The best thing to do is read the reviews. Yeah, that's true. Read the reviews. Read the feedback. Don't go by the one person that says, says, oh, I bought the seeds and they didn't grow when the other 90 people said how great they are because there's always one person that did something wrong or they're ticked off. Read the reviews, see what their ratings are. And I, I'm telling you, I like the heirloom seed. He's really good on eBay. And like I said, I don't know what he is right now. I'm going to have to go through and see if he's got anything I want. I saw a lot of seeds from last year. But right now I've started some stevia because I would like to get a lot of stevia co going. Castor beans for their leaves, that would be good. Uh, let me tell you something. When I moved here, this place was a castor bean field. It took a couple years to get rid of them. And they still pop up once in a while, and yet there's no castor beans growing in this area. But boy, it, they were huge. They were like 10 feet tall. What is Gary t going to grow on the trellis? I don't know, well, I'll have to watch and see. <laughs> He's going to grow all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I've, well, I started with the, uh, I know you don't like the I term. don't like the, you know what it is, and I did a survey. I do not like the name of the melons. They call them shark fin melons. That's their most common name. They need a different name. The Mexican name is Chila Coyote. The Coyote. Uh, Coyote? Chila. Chila? Coyote. Okay, that's not going to come out of my no. mouth easily, so we'll have to come up with something else. Fig so, leaf gourd is another name for it. You know what I don't like on that name? I'm not saying there's, I, I don't like the name gourd, because when somebody hears gourd, uh, try it again, Brenda, you've probably got a bad piece. Um, when I hear the name word gourd, it doesn't sound edible. This is an in interesting fruit. I'm going to have to tell you, I don't know what to do with it. The other one was named Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> um, when you cut it open, it looks like a white watermelon, round melons. Yeah, I know. I need a better name. It's a very unusual melon. And for some reason, they're really hard to find their seeds. Even Baker Creek doesn't sell it. And you cut them open, and they're white inside. I, this is why it's throwing me. It tastes, you say it tastes like a cucumber. I say it tastes like a cucumber honeydew cross. I don't know how to cook it as shark fin is tasteless. Yeah, but I don't like the name. I know, and, they, and it's, it's the Asians make a soup out of it, right? Yeah. And they call it shark fin? Yeah. Their soup. 
the soup. So they use that this melon in their soup. Yeah, because of the texture. It's got a it's got an unusual texture to it. All I'm saying, and this is what I asked somebody else, would you buy, I asked I asked a couple people, would you buy these melons called they're called shark fin melon seeds and they taste really good and they told me no. So as soon as you say shark fin, say say sugar dumpling melon and they'll just grab it. The 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 name doesn't suit it. It doesn't have a sandpaper. You have, do you have these melons? Uh, there are melons used in soups. That's what they are. This is a melon that's used in soup. Let me tell you something. The dogs love it. It's kind of odd to me because it's sweet. Yeah, it's sweet. It's got a subtle sweetness to it. It's, it's not like a... I wouldn't eat loofa gourd. Some people... Okay, yes, I grew them last year. Simpli simply, I know I'm butchering this name, okay. and it should be so easy. Simply, <laughs> you're gonna come read it. Gonna, I, it's like simplify, simplify, simplify gardening. That's okay. Simplify, simplify gardening. All right. Um, they, I'm gonna say, he or she says they grow it. It tastes good. I can eat it raw, and that to me, I want to eat it like a honeydew. I don't know how to cook it. I wouldn't make. A, a casserole out of it yet. I have to figure out what to do with it. And he's and he's going to have a ton of them because these are, it's a he. Okay. Simplified gardening is a he. So he's telling me, so what do you do with it? <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're perennial. I know they're perennials. They die but, back and then they grow. Oh, see, this one's coming back. They come back. right back. <gasps> it's already starting. Yeah. This one didn't really go completely dormant and it's already starting to grow back again from the roots. Okay, so, he eats it raw. Yeah, I eat it raw. I love this. It tastes and, really good to and me. And what do you call it? Do you call it shark fin melon? I don't like the name. I asked my granddaughter, would you bring some shark fin melon seeds home for mom to grow? Oh no, she won't grow it. Why? She, I just know she won't. Why? Yes, he calls it shark, shark fin melon. I guess okay. so. It's kind of, that's an odd name. It needs a better name. It needs a better common name. Something that, you know, I mean, think about it. Sometimes you'll buy something just because the name sounds good. But it is interesting. It's got a lot of seeds. He had one that he cut open. The seeds weren't black. And then you had one recently. Holly, hi. She says hi to both of us. And she's interested in your project. Yeah, I just, to me, it needs a better name. That's all. But it is interesting. And I haven't done anything. So he eats it raw. I would eat it raw. I can see that. That chopped up and put in a salad, like a fruit salad. Yeah, I eat it raw. And if I if I pick this one, the seeds would be green, right? So it's, See, it's green on the vine. Okay. If I pick this one, the seeds will be black. And the way because I've because it's done. Yep, yeah, it's done. It's not connected to anything really. It's basically connected there to there. But there's it, it's already hardened off. It's already um, curing. So this is just curing in my garden. I that's what I want to do is grow things that I don't have to find a place to store them. So if, if I can find something that I can leave in my garden as long as I can and just harvest it when I want it, you know, that's the sort of plant that I'm trying to focus on. A lot of my plants are that way. And sweet potatoes, which I should dig up. Should dig some up and he kill them. He says it's better to ripen it on the vine and eat it that way. Okay. And he knows because he's been growing it. This is our first season with them. This is our first season, and it's only half a season. I got planted them late last year. I planted them in totes. This coming year, I'll plant some in totes and some directly in the ground because if I plant them in the ground, they should turn into monsters. But I think by growing them in a tote, you'll be able to restrict the growth a little bit. You got them taking off in your garden, I yeah, saw all I, over. And those ones I had in totes, but they left the tote. And then they set root. And right? they set root along the vine, which is a cool right, thing. Cuttings. Okay, um, where'd it go? Ye Vida? Okay, she asked a question. She wants to know where the holes are on these totes. Okay, I can see them. Yeah, they're about two two inches up from the bottom. 
I'll ask the question before you ask. Why are they on the bottom? Why are they two inches from the bottom and not underneath? Well, and I know. See. I'm asking the question they didn't, okay. but somebody's going to ask it, and that's why. The pepper tray. <laughs> the pepper trays here. Hi, teasers, pleasers. Okay, this is why he can't put the holes in certain areas. What are you looking for, a shovel? I just put my shovel okay, away. Okay, see these trees? They get into everything. They literally, it's not just the totes that they'll, they'll get into, they will choke out plants in the ground. And there are some plants that cannot grow with other plants, especially vegetable plants. So all I have to do is just start moving wood chips away. These are, uh, these are Brazilian peppers. And Gary planted them before he realized what he did. When we got this property, it was bare. And while he digs, I'll tell you what happened. It was bare and that's a canyon. So what he wanted to do was stop the wind from coming up the canyon because he knew he wanted to make a garden behind here. So he planted all these baby pepper trees and they grew really fast. <laughs> And then he realized what he did. He should have planted something else. There's no roots here. You stopped it already. Oh, I see some roots. And there they are. Had he thought about it, he would have planted something else. So he planted the trees because we have one Brazilian pepper tree out front. And you took the seedlings from, uh, from that one, right? Yeah, the suckers that come up. These aren't massive, but some of them get massive. And what they do is run along the surface of the soil, the mineral soil at the base of the wood chips and then they head into my garden but in places like over there I had really thick ones so I think I've dug up most of the thick ones exactly that's simplified garden exactly he didn't realize it he wasn't even when he put these in they weren't garden all these trees that he put in including there's more over there no, not the avocado tree that was here. This was all open. So it was just completely open. So he thought he would put the, we had all these baby seedlings coming up. These are macadamia nuts. They would have done better had he done fruit trees and other trees instead, but he didn't think about it. So we've got the macadamia nut trees, but these are all pepper trees. And they grew really, really fast. And you said you'd like to have them all out. But the problem is they won't have the windbreak. Yeah, I can't find any big ones right now, but I try to get them before they get too thick. Some get to about an inch thick, and I have to root prune along the trees to keep them from going into my garden. Simplified Gardening is asking if you have really heavy, heavy clay. It looks like it looks like heavy clay. Yeah, it's heavy clay down here. It's very heavy. On the hillside, it's a combination of clay and silt. So it's better soil up along the hill. But this was ex excavated at some point. So this is rebuilding the topsoil back. And teasers, pleasers, we're actually talking about nothing. I came down here just for fun to see if I could get a good signal. And I'm hoping the signal's good. <clears throat> and I didn't realize he was filming. He was taping, I should say, he doing this project and we just came down here. I just wandered down here to see what he was doing and just kind of to chit chat. I'd like to do more live this year. Literally, if I go somewhere and I see something that's exciting that somebody might want to ask a question, this is my goal this year. I didn't go anywhere for almost two years. And so I decided I'm gonna to try to do more lives. So you have to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll know because I'm never gonna know. I'm not gonna schedule anything because I didn't even know now. I was work working in the house and I was, I was making some panels, window panels. No, I didn't make a video on it, but Kitty thought I was. I was making window panels and she was looking. It was so funny, she was running all over around me and doing circles. She was looking for her camera, but Oh, of course I don't have my good camera. Wait a minute. I am not sure what that is. I think there's a pair of woodpeckers. I'm not sure what those are. Gary, what is that? Uh, uh, 
thinking I, it's a nettles, but I'm not sure. No, that's that's not a, the one on the bottom wasn't a nettles. The one on the top is a mockingbird. So There's the hummingbird zipping around. They're all over because they're feeding in the window. But I think the other one was an acorn. They were big. I don't know. Anyways, I hate when I do that because I actually forgot what I was talking about besides working on projects. Do you remember what I was talking about? No. <laughs> that means you weren't listening to me. I just got hit by a drop. Is this supposed to rain? No. You was, you're talking Maybe about wanting to go out. And oh, yes. Do more so I am. Dates. See, he is listening to me. Usually I, he doesn't. No. Uh, no, so I'm going to try to do more live. So that's what I did today. I just grabbed the camera. My, it's actually my phone. And I figured, out, well, let's go all see because I haven't been down here either. And I wanted to see what he was doing. And that's what I want to do more often. You have something to say? Let's see. Uh, let's see. We're talking about Kitty. What are the bendy poles made from? This is um, Judy who came in late. Um, okay, so simplified garden. Okay, so your soil is in the lower area. Let's see. I see wood chips will certainly help. Yes. Uh, Holly caught us. She's so glad she caught us. Hi, everybody. Nuts and peppers sound good. Somebody I removed only because I have no idea what it said. So that's pretty much it. So you've got clay. And yes, the wood chips. If you have not seen the original videos when we first started, this did change gardening. You weren't going to garden without yeah. the wood chips. Well, for an example would be this area here that's been leveled out. Our bedrock is shale and that's just about a foot under the surface. So the first part of this, I had to put in concrete blocks to hold the rebar. And this is 5.8 rebar. So I put in concrete blocks and I made these pillar things to support the rebar. So right down here, we're pretty much sitting on bedrock and the clay soil is, is really horrible. So it's, I don't think it could grow much in this. It's dense and it's horrible. But as you go further up the hill, you've got more silt in it and it's better soil. I tried growing here and I did grow squash and some tomatoes back in the late 80s. And it was so difficult to grow in. But I did grow some, but eventually it was so hard. And then buying, then you had to buy garden soil to add in and different things that I gave it up. I mean, I, I did. Now, I don't have to really buy unless I just want to start seeds or have some for maybe the tops of the totes, but let everything else, you know, go for it. I do hear woodpeckers. Okay, you're right, there is a Nuttles, but I'm not sure about that one. We have a few different woodpeckers that have been showing up here. We started with a lot of Nuttles, which are, it's a small, beautiful little zebra-striped bird, and then they've got a little red crest, but now we've got, we've got a lot more. We've got acorns uh, that showed up. We have a red-breasted sapsucker. They've been hanging around. The flickers, flicker, 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 flickers. They've been hanging around, so we've had it quite a bit. I just love kitchen scraps, yard waste. That's, that is definitely the way to go. Absolutely, absolutely the way to go. Well, we've been on for just over an hour. I should go back up, finish my window. Now you can see my window panels from here, but you can't see how they are. That's my window panels I was working on. Those are flags and they're on a, whoops. The bendy poles. Oh, Judy wants to know what the bendy poles were. I forgot that was, Rebar. So let me let me see. Yeah, this is re so, rebar. Rebar. So I can go back and get my stuff done. I need to go fill hummingbird feeders. I can see that already. And I want to go finish a little bit in the garden. So do you have anything else to say? Thanks for sharing. Oh, this is fun. I hope to do a whole lot of this. I see flowers in my garden from the back side, and yet I don't see them from the front side. I think that that looks like geraniums. I'm trying to zoom in. That's my flowers. I see some flowers there. 
And there's the dragon fruit up there. My dragon fruit looks terrible now compared to his. Look at that. I started at one point to plant behind the wall, and I, I think I would like to try again. Of course, you gotta make a step uh, away for me to get down there again. He blocked it, he put something there, so I can't go up and down. All right, your apple trees never lost all their leaves. No, they don't, they don't go fully dormant here. They stop growing. Once I get this fenced off, I'll be able to remove this. I'll be able to maintain my apples. Right now, it's too hard to prune them or anything because I have to take the wire off and get in there. But once this is set up and I have this area fenced off, I'll be able to remove that and the deer won't be able to get to my apples. So. I like the idea of growing apples, but the deer liked it more. Trying to compost and containers, but scraps taking over a month to break down. Don't worry about, Rebecca, don't worry about them breaking down. Throw your scraps in there. Look at some of the videos on how I put the containers together. I know everybody does it differently. And throw some native soil, even if you had clay, a little bit on top of your scraps, and don't worry about it. When you're ready to plant, plant. Because as the plant is growing and your, your matter is breaking down, all the microbes, your plants will be feeding off of that. You don't have to have it like, it's not, you don't need it to look like a potting soil where it's already completely broke down. Let me tell you some certain plants, heavy feeders like squash, zucchini, which is a squash, um, I, peppers, tomatoes, eggplant, they all thrive on the soil that is breaking down. So they really feed off of that. So don't worry about what's breaking down. Hello, uh, Carol is from Hawaii. Like, okay. I, I like coming out and do, I don't have a problem doing live. I don't have to worry about, I, I'm not, I don't cuss, so I don't have to worry about being anything. I, I'm, this is me. I, this is, I, if I can't pronounce something, you're going to hear it. If I don't know something, I'm going to say I don't know because I don't know a lot. And um, it's for fun. It's like talking, you know, you guys are like a friend. You're, we're walking around, we're just kind of looking. I'm, I don't want to walk in your garden yet because I don't know if the signal will go there. Because when I did, I'm so stupid, I should have done it differently. I went and put the modem out that window. I should have put it out that window, but I put it out that window. So I'm going to try to figure out something, and maybe I can get a modem or a router. It's probably a router, I mean to say. Get it down here, and then may, I can be able to do it all the time. I can just sit out here and watch the birds. Oh, I should do that live when the Orioles come in. Oh, and I sit there and I, I watch them feed their babies. That would be fun to see them live. Come on. They're not here yet. They won't be here until March. So you, Wendy was, she, okay, so you were, I'm crushing eggshells in the garden. Wait a minute, this is cute. Originally to discourage the snails, now found out it feeds on them. I'm confused. I, I don't know. There's a lot of things that I'm going to say are old wives' tale, and some things that may work for somebody that won't work for somebody else. So maybe their snails didn't like the eggshells. You know, there's, you're going to have to handpick snails. I've tried tool on snails. That's interesting because I've actually wrapped it to see if they would go across it. And they only wanted to cross the tool if I trapped them inside. So it's possible that tool might work. You'd have to try it. Okay, simplified gardening says it's a, it is a waste of time. So there's, you'll just have to kind of deal with it. We have snails. I haven't noticed as many snails. We do have skunks. And periodically, Gary will find and see skunks I'm, you know, burrowing around, we'll make a home. I'll tell you something, skunks love snails. So they might be eating a lot of snails. They'll find shells that are empty, they'll suck them out. But as far as snails, try to hand pick out is the best you can. There's ways of getting rid of everything, but you know, it depends on what you're dealing with. Okay, so Simply Gardening is helping you with the snails good. Salt and beer. 
you know, and that will, I, you try whatever, try, try different things. Even if it sounds ridiculous, as long as other people are doing it, try different things and see what happens. Okay, ye Vita, that's exactly what I do. I have containers, small containers that I'll put kitchen scraps in and stuff on top. I will make a hole right in a container and bury a bunch of scraps. If you don't have a rat, you don't have a rat problem, you could just make a hole and you can bury a bunch of kitchen scraps. If you've got a rat problem, then go ahead and you can do it that way and then put something on top, like a larger, like a bucket, and that will discourage them. There's a lot of ways, so many ways to do it. They're pretty much drunk snails. Hi, Barbara C. Everybody's welcoming Barbara C. They're clapping. Yay, Barbara. <laughs> okay, any fees or anything? Have, have they gone into your log above your head? Or not yet? There's been activity in some of them. Yeah, something used that one there. There's nothing in there now, so they've, you know, probably okay, over you, springtime. Are... Yee Vita, did you actually eat your snails? One year I collected snails, fed them all for a while, then fed them wine, then cooked them, delicious. Okay. I don't know, maybe your snails are edible. I hope you're kidding. Unless you've got the edible no, snails. No, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I know, Gary will eat anything. I have had escargot. I've eaten mangrove Once. snails in Australia. You've done what? Mangrove snails. There are aquatic snails that live in mangroves. Okay. Oh, she's laughing. Okay, I think she was kidding. Were you kidding? Maybe you weren't kidding. I've had escargot once. I had a friend years ago. He was a, a police officer and he took, uh, took me to dinner at the police academy and that's the only place they ate it. Ate it. <laughs> I mean, it was okay. You know what? It was good. It was cooked in garlic. It was really good. That was the only place. And he insisted on me trying it. it had nothing to do with him being a police officer. I would have tried it or not tried it either way. And um, that was the only time I've ever eaten snail. But you've eaten snail, you said. Not regular snails. Oh, you've never eaten... Re M mangrove snails. Okay, that's the only time I've ever, ever eaten it. It was escargot. Oh, thank you, Barbara. It is. That's, I just wandered down. I was working in the house. I was working on a project making window panels. And I was, I was working on my window panels up there. You were not kidding. Well, I mean, like Gary said, you could have invited him over. He would have eaten it. He'll eat anything. He literally will eat anything. And that worries me sometimes. But... Uh, yeah, I was just working on the window panels, and I decided to just grab the, the, my phone and come down here and see if I can get a signal. There are birds everywhere. I'm looking around. I see them. It's hard to tell because it glares on the camera. There are birds just everywhere. And the hummingbirds. See the hummingbirds? And I can't tell if I have to go fill the feeders up again. I see them feeding. Let's see if they're too much. I'm going to have to do that anyways. I've been filling them like four times a day all over the place because they're coming through. Now, did I miss something? I think she's going to make you snails. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to work. And I'm thinking anything else you want to say because we're down here and we spent way too much time. My, my 10 minutes turned into 74 minutes. She wants to grow eels, ye Vita. But she's not sure where to start. Eels are delicious. Have you eaten eels? Yes, I have. Okay, Gary's eaten eels. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can't think of anything else. It is so pretty in your garden. I took a lot of greens the other day and made a green drink and it was really good. I didn't even take anything from my garden. Listen to all the birds. They probably can't hear it. The mics won't pick it up because we've actually got, we've got the mic on us. All right, well, I think I've bored you enough. <laughs> Let's see what he's gonna do, he's gonna water. 
Is that rainwater? Yes. She gave them homegrown lettuce. Connie, we ate eels as kids. I've never eaten eel. I don't think I've eaten eel. I, re I do realize that the escargots are not a garden variety. Oh, they're fed cornmeal. Interesting. To clean them. I have tried it. Once. All right, it's so quiet. Except for them working on the house. All right, so I guess that blue roses, it just came in and we're leaving. We've been on for se almost 76 minutes. Nice to see you too. All right, so I think that's it. I can't think of any, this is amazing. I would like to camp here. Oh, camp here and you'd be able to see the bobcat come at night and you peek out. But it's open on the bottom so anything can come through. Anything can crawl right through the bottom. Well, right now, yeah. So I'm going to put a gate down the other end. So that'll be my gate leading into here. Wow. So eventually, you know, this is just the beginning. Once I get it fenced off a bit more, it'll, it'll change. Okay, I see him now. I don't think you're gonna be able to see him. But he is noisy, look at that. Can you see the woodpecker up there? He's so loud. Isn't it? They're just hammering away. Okay, that's a woodpecker. They, but there's so many of them. It's unbelievable, and they're so loud. It is. Isn't his garden beautiful? It's just so green from the Philippines. Oh, yes, so beautiful. Oh, Darlene. Darlene is saying their signal is great. I would love to walk around more. I might even, maybe I should do a garden tour live that way. Then I'll have to work on a video and put it together and upload it. Okay, I don't know what he's complaining about. No, I think they're starting to call mates and stuff, but that's another pecker up there. Gosh, there's been all kinds of birds coming through, and I'm thinking, see if you can hear them even across the hill. They're just all over here, the woodpeckers. All right, so. Is it too late to start lettuce in zone 8A? I know everybody's saying goodbye and I haven't left yet. Bye, teasers, pleasers. I don't think so. You know what? I grow lettuce in the summer here when it's hot and I put it in the shade. So if it starts to look like it's too warm, get it in a little bit of a cooler area. You can probably make your own microclimates. I grow lettuce all year round. I've got it growing now in places that I didn't even plant it, the seeds fell in there. So I would say I don't think it's too late. That's my thought. Try it. Darlene is from Louisiana. Naomi is saying you're a wise man. You know when to remain silent. That's funny. That is funny. I don't know. Does he? Yeah, he is. So I think that's it. Is it too late to start lettuce? I'm going through real quick to see if there's any eye of grubs rubs probably in the in the totes don't worry about it you actually all that breaks down your soil but you know what if you end up with the the ones I don't care for even though there's nothing wrong with it I remember even seeing a version on gardening Australia they had blowfly ones those are the ones I don't like it's a blowfly not blowflies the, uh, bl the black soldier fly yes they're so big and awful looking you took them all you took that tote that time or, or you took everything out of that tote to move it down here because those things are really big. But I remember on Gardening Australia, they loved it. Yeah. Absolutely loved it because they eat everything down so fast and break it down great. Good, some of them are answering questions for you. I do the same thing, Melanie. I let a lot of it reseed and it's what you do there is, that is perfect. Summer, summer lettuces are stronger. So let's see, why were, why, Tanya wants to know, 
Why were his holes two inches up? Oh, she missed it. You could go back and watch it afterwards. Yeah. Basically, it's because of the trees. And these are Brazilian pepper trees. Even the California pepper trees are bad. And what they'll do is they send their feeder roots into totes. And if you've got totes, flower pots, even plants in the ground, they go underneath the plants and they rob everything, the water, nutrients, everything. But when they get into a tote, if you've got holes, even holes that big, what they'll do to a tote, trees, is they'll get their roots in there and then they'll swell up and the roots will get really thick and they'll block the holes and they'll kill the plants. So that's why the totes are above because the roots cannot crawl up. They can go up only if that place got covered with leaves, then the roots, can, the roots have to stay underground. Now once a root comes up and it gets a dry scale to it, the skin gets hard, I don't know what you would call it, the outside part, then it can be above the ground. But when they're fresh roots, fresh roots cannot come up and go. They can't go up and then in. So that's why his totes have, it, he's, try, he's fighting tree roots. But you have a lot in the ground in your garden. Tree roots or plants? Plants. Plants, yeah, well most of my garden inside is raised beds. You have raised beds now because of tree roots. Well, no, the raised beds get the tree roots, so that's for drainage. The drainage, okay. The main reason I've got raised beds is, as I was saying earlier, just underneath here is bedrock. And the bedrock is maybe 10 inches below my garden. So there's no drainage. The raised beds elevate the soil and there's drainage. S and M-E-M-B-R-Y 2014 is not using pesticides of any sort considered organic. Yes, and you want to know something? You don't want to use any type of pesticides to be organic. It's got to be all organic. You can't use any to be organic. And plastic, though, is considered organic. Isn't that interesting? So, yeah, we are organic. We don't use any type of pesticides at all. And yes, May, uh, May Day Garden, it does hold water, especially here in Southern California. When we don't get enough rain, there's always a little bit of water in there. And if the roots need it, they can go down to it. If they don't need it, they'll keep their roots up. And yes, wildlife is wonderful. They, I was showing a neighbor this morning all the bush tits. She was in the yard and they came in like 50 of them and they were eating insects. I said, you love bush tits. They come in, they're little tiny birds, and they eat all the insects off. Thank you, Darlene. Uh, and I'm gonna call you S and me. How about that right now? Um, I, it depends on what type of insects you're dealing with. So it's really hard to say, you know, you're not sure how to control insects. But you can control a lot of insects with tool, T-U-L-L-E and sometimes I have to use tool. If you're dealing with something like brassicas, tree collards, kales, all that, you don't need to have anything pollinated. So you can cover that with tool all you want. You can make a whole netting over it and then you don't have to worry about it. If you need something pollinated to get the fruit, then you can't cover it completely in tool. So there's different ways to deal with different insects. Darlene loves your accent. I don't hear it. Um, better to have a three, yes. Isn't that funny? I don't hear his accent. But yet when his sisters came here, I could hear theirs and I had to listen to understand them, but I don't hear his. It's just, it's just the way it works. All right, I think that's it. Sharon loves the construction. Yeah, we'll come back. I'll come back another time when he's working down here and getting it set up. And like I said, I hope to do more live, just here and there, even if it's not for 84 minutes. The other day I came on live for 16 minutes when the hummingbirds were swarming and I'll do that again and that was that worked out better. So that's it. Roxanne Vargas. He has tubs on the ground. Does he just let the water run out? Yes, these do run out and he can plant things on the ground as well if he wanted to. You could put walking onions in the front. I don't think he's yeah. water. He's not over watering to the point where the water is even running out, I don't think. No, it's not. Not a lot coming out. And Thank you, Simplified Gardening. Here I'm, I'm not really going. In my main garden, yes, but out here I'm not, I want to keep it fairly clear along the bottom, so I'm, I won't be planting in the ground. Well, I may 
redirect some of the holes to the plants that I will be putting in the ground. I should, should clarify that because there's going to be plants that I'll be able to plant straight in the ground Hi, away Annie. from the totes. I'm saying hello to Annie. Um, the hummingbirds coming through, it, through, it's going to be a combination. And you think about it, some of the hummingbirds in the late fall take off and they go all the way down into Central America. And then when they've got to go up north, let's say they've got to get to Oregon, Washington, Alaska, some of them go that far, they're going to start to come up. So if they know the weather's fine, and believe you, they, believe you me, they know better than us, they'll start to migrate through. It's not like they are just going to take off and say, okay, we're going to Washington and we're going to fly to Seattle. They don't do it in a day. It could take them months to get there. They're going to stop at all food sources, any place that's good. In the meantime here, they can find the food source. They can hang out here for even another month, even another month and a half, and then continue up north. The ones that are going to the East Coast will probably be coming across Texas a different way because like we don't get ruby-throated and they head to the Midwest and up north. So it's, it's a slow process for some of them. And then of course, if they find enough food here, certain ones could just stay. It's, and then if they think they can't make the trip, maybe they're older birds, some of those stay. Well, that's basically it. So I think they are migrating through. We've had good weather. And then if it gets too cold, they'll leave. They'll go somewhere else. They'll go closer to the coast or something where it's a little warmer. Marie, thank you. Annie, thank you. Philippine Islands, thank you. Got to get groceries. I got to go back and get my stuff done. So that's basically it. If I missed anybody, hello, Sharon. Uh, I think I got you. I did get you. I'm looking to see if I missed anybody. I'm sure I did, and I'm so sorry. I'm, there's a ton of questions here. Wendy, I think I said hello to you earlier. I know I said hello to May Day. Barbara C, I always say hello. Hello, Barbara C. I want to do something. I'm going to. I'm going to try something, Barbara C, and hopefully I won't knock you off. I'm giving you something. I, Barbara, did you tell me if you see something, your name might light up differently now. I think I did it right. If not, I've totally eliminated Barbara C and she's no longer there, which I have done before. Let's see. I am looking to try to find Barbara now. Barbara, where are you? I'm looking for you, Barbara. Okay, I can't find you. You're one of my first members, I think. One of them. Okay, Barbara, I think, please tell me, Barbara, I didn't knock you off. Uh-oh, I see Barbara. Okay, Barbara, you should have a, a different thing by your name now. So hopefully you see that because I still see you and I did not. Oh, I see Barbara. She sees something. She probably doesn't even know what to do with it. If somebody did that to me, let's say a couple of years ago, I wouldn't know what to do with it either. So I think that's it. I'm going to go up and go do the hummingbird feeders there. And then I've got feeders around the garden as well. I don't have any. Yes, she sees it. And um, I should bring a hummingbird. He doesn't need a hummingbird feeder down here. Then I'd have to be hiking down here. All right, do you have any last words? No, I'm, I'm pretty good. I know, we're sitting and now we're really boring everybody. 88 minutes of standing here not knowing what to say. Aren't those trees amazing? They would not be if one of them fell, but I still like them. Oh my goodness, I just noticed it's taller than the palm tree. And they've gotten really big. I remember when they were planted and I did not plant them. Wow, okay, so I think that's it. I think this time I really should go. Kate, hello. Yeah, you caught it live and I'm leaving. Nikki, hello. This was fun, oh, Nikki's been there. And I've got a ranch. Yes, you've got a ranch. So uh, you told me to give Barbara C yes. a ranch. Okay, because you said next time, and I, I wasn't sure if I gave her a ranch or I knocked her off totally. <laughs> I've done that. I can't remember if it was Barbara I knocked off somebody once or no. if it was Blue Roses. I knocked okay. somebody off one day. I knocked another person off that said they were not. They were on, I don't remember if it was Blue I Roses. Think, I think she knows what to do with the ranch too. Okay, so. well, I... I knocked somebody off when I didn't mean to. That's why I have to be careful because on the phone it's small and you don't know. So I threw her a wrench. I'll probably be throwing more wrenches out here and there. All right. I can't think of anything else. It's so pretty. I just like hanging out here. 
Okay, blue roses. What does a wrench do? What a wrench actually does is it basically gives a person the ability to, that's a good question. If somebody started cussing or, or saying something really bizarre or started doing weird things, you have the ability to, to meet somebody. Oh, Barbara C. just went to Google it. She, Barbara, Barbara didn't know what a wrench, she's a moderator. <laughs> she didn't know, she's got a wrench, she stuck a wrench by my name. So what it does is it gives you the ability to take somebody off. Uh, sometimes you'll see people, will, I, I may miss it, and somebody might be coming in and doing a bunch of gibberish on there, and it's not nice. Yeah. And a lot of you will go in there, get off, leave. Well, when you have a wrench, you don't Inna have to say anything. Inappropriate website links and stuff like that, too. Yeah, and so if you have a wrench, you don't even have to ask me. You see, like, this does not belong here, and boom, you have a little place to do a button and say goodbye blue roses. Power! Barbara says she's got power now. <laughs> well, we, we probably will need some more power, especially if I start doing more and more live. I'll need a few of you out there to, because I will miss it. And then you'd be able to say, naughty, naughty, you can't do that. Bam, you're gone. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else. I really do have to go back and I'm really excited with my window covers. I had those flags, you know, years ago. You probably don't want to hear the stories. I used to sell flags on eBay. Oh, the stuff I have sold on eBay is so funny. It was a way to make a, a small living, paid my taxes on there and I would get flags for really cheap. Hi Elaine, and, or it could be Eileen. And, um, I started looking through and I still have flags. I looked through, I started looking through them two days ago and I thought, wait a minute. Good luck with going live. Well, I don't know, we'll see. And so I made the panels and um, I like them. You can't see this one, it's so funny. I wish you could, I can't hold the camera still. She was golfing and I didn't like that. So I stapled another one on top. I had a little flag with flowers and now it looks like she's gardening. But it looks better than having a, the way I had it. Let's put it that way. So that's what I was doing today. And I was looking out the window and I saw Gary working. And I thought, I'm going to go try this. All right. So I'm going to see if there's anything else. That... It is raining. I hear it. And I just got hit in the face again. Do you hear it? It's yeah, raining. I can hear it. it wasn't supposed to. But... Nobody's talked about rain. And it's getting louder too. Everybody smash the like button. Thank you. Gatekeepers. That's a good, good name. It's raining. Okay, my phone isn't getting wet yet. Supposedly this phone is waterproof, but I'm not going to try it. So you can hear it. I don't see any drops. You can't hear it, but I can hear it. It is raining. Big drops. We're getting like See, yeah, cloudy. I can't wait to see it either. Suggestions on, if you're asking me, Carol, to sell seats. Suggestions, sell seats, oh, me. I don't know, that's the problem. When you start doing stuff like that on eBay and you start selling, you're literally tied up all day. Oh, my camera, my phone is getting wet. You're literally tied up all day because one order can take you 15, not even just to print up the label and get the, the little envelope and package together. And it would be just me. My daughter was going to help me once and was like, no, I'm not doing this. And it's, it takes a lot of time and I'd rather be doing videos. It's raining. I like to show the rain and see the rain. That's raindrops, everybody. Raindrops are falling on my head, and they are. Nobody said anything about rain. Cool. Anyway, so we'll see. I would like to do something where I've got a surplus of walking onions that I can, you know, maybe ship some walking onions out and maybe some uh, tree colored cuttings or something. I'm trying to figure out how to get around and do that. So Sandra, hello Sandra, Montavio, 
Montavo. Montavo, she's, she just came in, we're leaving. We've been on for 95 minutes. So I, I've told, you know, I've said we're leaving for the past 15. I'm just so surprised it's raining. Okay, I am gonna leave now. I am gonna work on walking onions. They should be walking again in the spring sometime, but they haven't started yet. And you're putting your potatoes back. So everybody have a wonderful, wonderful day. Don't forget to eat what you grow because I said, used to say that to myself because I'd grow all this stuff and then it would die and I'd go, oh, I forgot to eat it. <laughs> Is Ray from Praxis here? Ray's not here. I wish he would be. I miss Ray. I don't think he's here. He's not. He's not watching here. I. I just got so used to watching Ray, and I think he needed a break. And so he's, he says he's gone. But I'm hoping. I think he'll come back. So if you are here, Ray, somebody said they thought they saw you. Hello. And if you're not, well, I'll try to find you somewhere. He does go to live chats, and he does watch other people. All right. So I think that's it. Goodbye, everybody. Have a wonderful day. I don't think we're going to rain long, which just big drops are falling. And Kathy, goodbye, everybody. Let's see, uh, Carla, goodbye again, Barbara C. You're welcome. Goodbye, thank you. And I think that's it. Do you have anything to say before I hit the goodbye button, Jerry? No, that's pretty much it. I'm going to pack up my tools and get on to the next project. I'm going to go back in the garden. I'm working on a tote. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Oh, I should.